these saucers. It's something people can explain. Are these balloons? People can understand a balloon. Maybe they're all this. Maybe everything that's happened so far has been this. And, and maybe now we can dismiss it. Or maybe we could say it's a military thing. It's sort of the same thing in, in that it's approachable. It's relatable. It's uh, You don't require advanced quantum physics to understand it. Um, first of all, what do you make of these things? And is it potentially at its core a giant psyop designed to distract us like we the bread know. and circus? We and don't know. Except bread and saucers. Look, the thing is, there are two basic doors into the this phenomenon. One of, is indirect evidence, and the other is direct evidence. And if you ask me, if you go by direct evidence, um, with everybody owning a camera in their pocket, you have to say that this is nonsense, <laughs> because there is no direct evidence that's high quality. There's no high quality data in the public domain. That's right. So let's just say that from the direct evidence perspective, this is nonsense. It doesn't exist. It's very silly. Okay. Now you switch your lens. You say, there seems to be an overwhelming amount of indirect evidence, like psychotically overwhelming. And I was unprepared for this until I started looking at it. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how we, I mean, you can get rid of people who see ghosts and people who have a need for attention and you're left with people who don't want to talk about it, whose lives have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, particularly some very kind of modest and modest cognitive gift folks who seem to be able to act at the level of Brando, which I don't believe. I believe that these people have been hurt. Um, some of them with, by who? With necrosis. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but according to Gary Nolan, he's seen damage paths through tissue that correspond to crazy stories where the story actually has a physical trace. <laughs> um, I would say from the indirect perspective, I don't think that we're capable of faking this at this level, even if we wanted to, even if we wanted to fly, you know, SR-71 Blackbirds and their successors and we wanted a story. So in case anybody sees one, you know, the jig isn't up. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen a subject that has that profile. <laughs> Zero direct evidence, overwhelming indirect evidence. Somebody smarter than me has to call it. And in terms of probability in a Bayesian sense between getting hearings on the EcoHealth Alliance versus getting public We're access. We're not getting to, anything. Like, no. <laughs> why do we have a government like that? I mean, we, and I think we, a lot of we, this flows down from government. Not all, but a lot of it does. Sources and methods has become the bane of our democratic existence. I am convinced that there is an issue of privilege around many of the things we cannot resolve. You cannot have this many things shoved into sources and methods so that the public can never figure out what's going on. And classified and put into a garage. Sources somewhere. and methods. Hmm. And, and, and we have this, you know, we have an incredibly incredible structure for avoiding the Freedom of Information Act where we have private companies and the private companies are entrusted with secrets that you can't afford to hold in government. So in the same way that, you know, a rich person will set up an irrevocable trust and say, what assets? I don't have the assets. Penetrate this. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and the answer is the person doesn't have the assets. A container has the assets and that somebody is in control of the t uh, container, directing the container to make loans, which are, you know, taxed under different structures. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so the person is and limited liability for them. living a, an incredible la lavish lifestyle with no assets. With no assets. And, and so my feeling is, is that the government has figured out the FOIA issue, which is like, what information? We don't have any information. But it seems to me if, you know, if there were hyper intelligent aliens or some huge, um, you know, kind of malevolent entity on Earth, that they couldn't find a better way to destroy Earth than than sort of undermining our faith in science. And I feel wait, like wait, wait we're doing that ourselves. No, okay. The cowards in science are doing that. And in particular, you know, a short time ago, uh, I was against public health. And people thought, like, how can you be against What, what is that? What, explain what you mean, public health. Not just funding for, you know, single no, pay? No, uh, we have a, a culture of non-scientific behavior that involves manipulating massive numbers of people. Um, because both war and pandemic are two places where you cannot make a libertarian argument. You can't say, well, whoever wants to go can go. Uh, you know, good luck with that. Then you, that's going to be a self-extinguishing argument. So there is a sort of sacred obligation when invoking 
public health, saying you all have to do the following thing. Right. And Safety unfortunately, Uber this this appeals to people who have who are willing to forego income for the privilege of telling other people how to live their lives. So it selects for the wrong element. Ideally, what you would want is people who are loath to tell other people how to live their lives, who only invoke this when it is absolutely necessary. But good luck convincing uh, people who are you know, two clicks away from pure libertarianism to go into this public health field. So we absolutely need public health, but we can't afford Fauci-style, Collins-style public health. And, you know, what that is, and, and Dajic's, you know, and, and it's the manipulation of people invoking science to tell people to do things that you claim are in the best interest, the social welfare function of your, of your nation. 